are delighted. So they're going to challenge, no doubt, this pair, Angelika Krilova and Oleg Ovzienikov. But uh, if you haven't seen these two before, skating to the drinking song, then watch this. Well, with the uh, retirement of the Olympic champions, Pasha and Platov, Angelika and Oleg are now the world champions. And for the first time ever, we're allowed vocal music. Yes. completely different style and approach than the French team. But again, there's a difficulty there. I don't personally feel it's as waltzy as the French, but the difficulty and the strength and the speed of the edges is certainly there. Perhaps a little expect. more, perhaps a little more theater about these two? I think that they're a theatrical couple, which is why I prefer um, the more traditional sort of romantic waltz, but that's personal opinion and also why you have nine judges. Yeah. Their lines match so well. You can see it very distinctly there. Both born in Moscow, but now training in Delaware in the United States, as many are. Her turn technique is very, very smooth and very, very tidy. I think that's the difficulty that is probably what puts them ahead. Well, their coaches were the 1980 Olympic champions. Remember uh, way back then. That was uh, Natalia Linichuk and uh, Gennady Kaponosov. Kaponosov. Very adept performers, these two. Like dancers have to have. Extreme expression. They're skating to an opera, so they've done it in operatic style. The rules say that it must be basically translated from ballroom dancing onto the ice and it's up to the judges now to decide whether that's been the case for the drinking song. Well, Oleg turns 29 this week, so this would be a very nice present if they could eclipse uh, Anasina and Pizarra. I think the teams are very, very close. It's a close call, and you can see that Angelica is just watching those marks very intently. A but six. they're good enough. They're going to be good enough to edge them in front. That ranks them number one. What a 